when these rappers get not incidental somebody made a hundred million dollars and now don't have to talk to that artist or none of their crew don't have to validate none of their contracts a lot that means every time an album gets sold tlc gets 56 cents so 10 million records 5.6 million dollars seems like a lot of money well it's not a lot of money when the record company has spent three million dollars to record your album how come you guys didn't include the the clive davis you know pulling a out on Cl clive davis part in the biopic well first of all we never we, we didn't pull out any on clive and we did um have a moment but you got to keep in mind it's, it's it's hard to tell every little detail it's been over two decades since we lost one third of the iconic tlc lisa left i lopez and her loss is still felt in the music scene and to this day theories about the bizarre accident that took lisa's life are drawing attention not just from fans but also from industry heavyweights like cat williams who seem to think that a lot of these so-called accidents in the entertainment world are not accidental at all. Lisa lost her life in 2002 in a tragic car crash in Honduras. And as news of Lisa's passing spread, whispers started swirling that the official narrative of her death didn't add up. Some folks in the industry even began drawing connections between Lisa's untimely demise and the tragic loss of Aaliyah, who passed away almost a year to the day before Lisa. And here's where it gets even more intriguing. New details have recently emerged suggesting that Lisa's death could be linked to something darker. Rumors of industry sacrifice and names like Clive Davis are being tossed around. So what's the real deal behind Lisa Left Eye's death? Did Cat Williams really confirm this was another industry sacrifice? Let's get into it. He goes up and up and up. So they this $20 million guy, but they reach 60 million in benefits. Lisa Left Eye Lopez, alongside her bandmates T-Boz and Chili, made up the iconic R&B group TLC, and together they ruled the late 90s and early 2000s music scene with infectious beats and unapologetic attitude. But at the height of all the fame and glory, tragedy struck with a devastating blow on April 25th, 2002. On that day, Lisa's life was tragically cut short in a car accident while she was in Honduras. Lisa was in Honduras on a 30-day spiritual retreat seeking comfort and peace after going through some messy situations in both her personal and professional life. So on April 25th, 2002, Lisa was off to shoot some video footage with her friends and a few locals in Honduras. She decided to take the wheel of a rented SUV, but as they were cruising along a calm country road in perfect weather, Lisa suddenly lost control of the vehicle and slammed into a tree. The aftermath was devastating. Lisa was gone in an instant, but miraculously, all the other passengers managed to survive. Now here's where it gets even more surreal. Lisa's friends who were tagging along to capture footage for her documentary ended up recording the whole tragic incident on camera. But there's another spine-chilling twist to this story. Just days before Lisa's passing, she was involved in another horrifying incident that took the life of a young Honduran boy. Lisa was riding shotgun in a car driven by her assistant, Stephanie Patterson, when tragedy struck. They accidentally hit a young local boy named Beiron Isaul Fuentes Lopez, and sadly, the boy didn't make it. But neither Lisa, her assistant, nor the boy's parents reported the incident. Instead, Lisa took it upon herself to step in and ease the burden on Bayron's parents. According to People, she personally covered the medical and funeral expenses for the grieving family. Now fast forward to the aftermath of Lisa's tragic passing, and the footage she and her friends captured in Honduras takes on a haunting significance. This very footage became the foundation for the 2007 VH1 documentary, Last Days of Left Eye. And in one scene straight out of a horror movie, Lisa opens up about how she felt a ghostly presence haunting her after Bayron's death. You know these are? These are the shoes that belong to the little boy. And his last name was Lopez. Ain't that something? 
Later on, Lisa's brother Ronald Lopez confirmed that Lisa had a strange feeling after the boy's death. He said, I think Lisa felt like death was coming and, you know, maybe it got this boy by accident instead of her. Lisa's publicist, Jay Morose, made a similar comment saying, she felt an energy that was coming to a close for her the end of her time on Earth with us. But there's another side to this story that delves into those long-standing rumors about sacrifices in the music industry. See, some insiders have drawn parallels between Lisa's tragic passing and the death of Aaliyah. Aaliyah's life was cut tragically short in a plane crash in the Bahamas on August 25th, 2001, almost exactly a year before Lisa's demise. And over the years, there's been a whirlwind of speculation surrounding Aaliyah's death, with some folks claiming that it might have been orchestrated. And those whispers gained even more traction when it came to light that Aaliyah was given a sleeping pill and carried on the plane unconscious. Aaliyah was given a sleeping pill and carried onto the plane unconscious before the fatal crash happened in the Bahamas. Kingsley Russell, who was 13 at the time, was in the car that drove Aaliyah and her team to the airport for their return flight to Miami. According to Kingsley Russell, they took her out of the van and she didn't even know she was getting boarded on a plane. According to eyewitnesses, before boarding the plane, Aaliyah put up a fuss and refused to get on until someone from her team handed her a pill and she quickly passed out. So when you start connecting the dots, it seems like both Aaliyah and Lisa had some sort of gut feeling or premonition shortly before their tragic end. Now let's talk about music video director Hype Williams because he's another piece of the puzzle connecting Lisa Left Eye and Aaliyah. So just before her passing, Aaliyah started shooting the video for Rock the Boat with Hype and they kicked off filming in Miami. But then then, out of the blue, Hype decided to shift the production to the Bahamas. Aaliyah's ex, Dane Dash, spilled the beans later on, revealing that he had warned her against getting on that plane because he felt Hype had no reason to pressure her to fly to the Bahamas. Besides that, Dane claimed that Lenny Kravitz offered Aaliyah his private jet, but Hype allegedly took it from her. You know, I knew that that was going to happen. And then, when she actually was uh, saw the plane, she... Um, you know, we had the Blackberries, and she said, I don't like this plane. And I was like, well, don't get on it. And what I was really more tight about was that I had heard that Lenny Kravitz had offered her a jet, and then Hyper took the jet. So that's what really pissed me off about the situation when I heard about that. So with all these eerie coincidences stacking up, it's no wonder that fans and even some celebs have started tossing around the idea that Aaliyah's death might have been something more sinister, like an industry sacrifice. Also, let's not forget that Mary J. Blige literally called Aaliyah's spiritual murder. Uh, I just know that that was a murder. You know what I'm saying? That was a spiritual murder whether people know it or not because God don't kill people. Now, why would Mary use the word murder? to describe a plane accident? Well, we can only speculate because Mary still refuses to explain what she meant by that. Now, as for Hype Williams and his connection to Lisa, these two crossed paths after teaming up for TLC's No Scrubs music video, as well as Lisa's solo debut, Block Party. But here's where things get really intriguing. According to an article by BET, Hype joined Lisa for a trip to Honduras in 2001, a year before her death. But they weren't just there to soak up the sun. Instead, they were reportedly on a mission to meet with Dr. Sebi, this Honduran healer who made quite the name for himself with his alternative healing methods. So Dr. Sebi stirred up quite a controversy with his unconventional beliefs, claiming he could cure any disease under the sun with nothing but herbs. He even denied that HIV caused AIDS and claimed a special diet could cure AIDS patients. Now, despite his controversial beliefs, Dr. Sebi managed to build himself quite the following, running a popular treatment center in Honduras before expanding his practice to New York City and LA. And get this, he even had some big name clients, including Michael Jackson and John Travolta. Dr. Sebi eventually got slapped with an arrest in NYC for practicing medicine without a license. But since, legally speaking, his practice didn't exactly fall under the category of medicine, he managed to wiggle his way out of trouble. But fast forward to 2016, and Dr. Sebi found himself in hot water once again, this time down in Honduras, 
where he was accused of money laundering. And unfortunately, during his time in custody, Dr. Sebi fell ill with pneumonia and passed away. Now, it's unclear if Hype Williams and Lisa actually interacted with Dr. Sebi during their 2001 trip to Honduras. But a lot of fans have been giving Hype the side eye because both Aaliyah and Lisa were around him in their final days. But there's another juicy piece to this puzzle, and it involves another big industry name. None other than Arista Records founder and Diddy's mentor, Clive Davis. See, TLC had a major beef with Clive over the way his label was exploiting them. And at one point, things got so heated that TLC allegedly held Clive hostage and demanded the royalty money they felt he owed them. Now, according to T-Boz, Lisa was the brains behind the whole operation. But here's where things took a wild turn. T-Boz spilled that it was Clive's rumored boy toy, Diddy, who snitched on them and ruined their plan. The record, the record company, Clive Davis, we held them hostage like the whole shebang. Yeah, yeah it was like that. Because, wait, wait, wait a minute. I want to make sure we understand. Yes. Yes. Come on, give me the story, I'm going to tell you because TLC had generated on Crazy Sexy Cool $75 million and they gave us $50,000 a piece. I was like, what the hell? So, of course, Lisa was the ringleader. Like, we need to go get our money. I need to know where my MF and money's at. So, <laughs> you know, she was, she was locked up in the diversion center for burning down the house. And um, she was just like, Okay, we gonna get in the face and them girls I was locked up with, we gonna drive up there, we gonna take the good And then we had this limo driver. Wait, she just got out of jail. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And we had the limo driver and um, he was the getaway car. So we went up there and held everybody hostage and Puffy was the one that snitched us out. Yo, B, yo, your girl's up here mad bugging, yo. And I was like, oh, Puff, why you gonna snitch us out, dog? But Puff he called it. Yeah, because we kicked him out of the meeting. Well, wait a minute. Puffy, <laughs> mind your damn. Okay, go ahead, so let's recap. We've got the bizarre car accident, Lisa's claims about being haunted by the ghost of a boy who died before her, rumors surrounding Aaliyah's alleged sacrifice, the Hype Williams connection, the ongoing speculation about Clive Davis and Diddy, TLC's showdown with Clive. I mean, with all these pieces of the puzzle coming together, it's no wonder that fans are starting to wonder if Lisa's death was more than just a tragic accident. A lot of people are speculating that she might have been taken out by the higher-ups in the industry. And some folks are pointing to this interview with Cat Williams, where he alleged that the high number of deaths in the music industry are not a coincidence and that they all tie in with the greed and control of those who run the industry. When these rappers get not incidental, somebody made a hundred million dollars and now don't have to talk to that artist or none of their crew, don't have to validate none of their contracts, now only got to deal with the mama. Only got to see her once a year and it's over. And the money, he goes up and up and up. So they kill this $20 million guy, but they reach $60 million in benefits. But what's your take on Lisa's passing? Do you think it was just a twist of fate? Or is there some truth to this theory of an industry sacrifice? Drop your thoughts in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video.